Hey, the Brian from QuantLabs.net. Uh, this uh, presentation I'm about to show you is a, a report on our uh, trading infrastructure for what we call next generation trading with Quant, high frequency trading if you want to call it that, really more automated trading. So essentially, uh, over the last three years with the site uh, QuantLabs.net, there's been a journey of selecting the right technologies. Uh, I'm gonna explain why I'm choosing what I'm uh, going to use and the reasons for it and the pros of it. I mean, obviously there's cons um, and uh, those are going to be self-evident once you get through the presentation. So let's get through this. Um, all right. So first, uh, the benefits of what we're choosing uh, with these tools, uh, basically a lot of things I look for um, when, when I'm about to use something, especially when it comes to software, is, you know, out of box, I like stuff that's ease of use, well documented, has a very uh, active community. Um, has to be professional grade for enterprise use, uh, which a lot of the, you won't find a lot of open source that's been chosen, which brings that, where it's not really meant for uh, enterprise use. Some some is, some isn't. Um, and a lot of the uh, tools here are recognizable, te recognizable technologies, as I said, for enterprise use and uh, wide management acceptance, that, which is important because uh, let's say you're going to put a, a solution into a bank, it's open source. Uh, and the thing goes off the rails and they lose, I don't know, $5 million. They want to sue somebody, so I like to sue the vendors that are responsible for uh, that technology. When it, open, when it comes to open source, no one really owns that uh, technology. So, <clears throat> we come into our first uh, tool, what I call uh, for prototyping and uh, researching. Um, first thing I need to mention is um, we, I have looked at R, uh, I've heard about Python, I've really played with it a lot. Um, uh, but these are really good tools, they are free, um, and uh, what I found with these tools are just not easy to adopt or implement with anything. Um, it's just, out of, that's without a box. You got a lot of uh, pretty well, basically going on Easter egg hunt to find things to get stuff done, whereas with all these other ones that I've chosen, they're very much easier uh, to work with. And obviously one of the tools is, is MATLAB. Um, with MATLAB, there's a lot of implementation pros. As I said, it's like easy to use, has a lot of professional training resources, is widely accepted in enterprise environments like banks and hedge funds. Uh, MATLAB scripts can easily be extended into uh, native languages, what I call, or they call, code generation, to fast languages like C or C++ for algo deployment into uh, trading platforms. Now, you can also do the same thing with .NET and Java, but it's not um, it's not co-generating it. It's just it's just a, using a bridge, a, a way to a bridge into that technology into a, you know, a runtime session, which is not really what you want when it comes to more high frequency uh, type of trading on a, on a tick level like a sub second. So uh, one of the other big things that I loved about MATLAB was uh, Simulink. Um, now this is another environment. I got lots of videos on this, uh, which allows you to visually design your strategy, your trading model and um, you can easily uh, implement that, well I should say easily, but you can co-generate that into uh, efficient embedded uh, C++ and it's quite small and as I said it's fairly uh, efficient. Now if you ever wanted to go ultra low frequency or high frequency uh, you could always use FPGA deployment as an option from within uh, the Simulink environment. Uh, it's easier than hand coding it and that you can do this via the uh, Simulink HDL Codal Toolbox. Uh, it's not a cheap option. If you're looking for easy use, this is a good path to go down. And the other cool thing is because it's in Simulink, let's say you have very five uh, trading models that prove to be profitable, to transition it from, let's say, C or C++ into uh, FPGA can be done from the same uh, Simulink uh, uh, panel or, I don't know, document, whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of good. Uh, so you don't have to hand code and rebuild code from something to something. It's, that's kind of what I like about this, this uh, path. Um, and then that brings me into the Microsoft technologies. Um, this is like, like I haven't really formally built a, a trading platform, but I am using .NET and C-sharp uh, languages to get that accomplished. Um, I found it was the easiest uh, development uh, process and I, it was enabled me to get quick to, to market with the thing and so I have a variety of different uh, processes that I've built I've demoed them on my YouTube channel uh, you can go there and check them out 
Um, also, I've played quite a bit, a couple of weeks with uh, SQL Server. Now, I've played with things like MySQL. Don't ask me about Oracle. I'm just not a fan. I just find it very kludgy, very heavy um, to set up. And it's just, it's really archaic in terms of the technology. Why? Because it's built in Java. SQL Server is really good for uh, housing your market uh, feed data. Uh, they, they seem, they, each version seems to be getting better and better. Um, and with the product, uh, it's called Stream Insights. It's, it's really good for a data mining uh, used for complex event processing. That can be a very expensive option. Um, that's comparable to something like a Streambase or a KDB. Uh, it's not quite there yet, but SQL Server may one day uh, get there, uh, maybe, maybe even with the 2014 release, who knows. Um, also, one thing I do like about uh, Office Suite products, especially like Excel, it's a, it's a really powerful uh, tool for front-end capabilities for charting, uh, screeners, portfolio management. Again, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time. I'm a one-man show, or one-person show, I should say. So I don't have a lot of coders at my disposal to develop stuff. I don't, you know, in order for me to get up and running, these are the paths that I use because out of box, they're close to ready to go and they're just easier to use than other open source technologies, which is just very, as I was saying, very kludgy um, and, and very hard to integrate with everything. And the other problem is with a lot of these uh, open source tools is that who who's developing them? Who's, who's vetting them? Who's, how do you know that the quality is there in these tools uh, especially when you're going to start moving into like a seven, eight, or even a nine digit type of environment. Um, for me, I feel more confident using more commercial type of grade software. At the beginning, when you're using uh, open source technology, it's fine because it's free, it doesn't cost you anything. But as you move into a more sophisticated type of operation, who knows, I may end up like that. It's just I feel more confident with using uh, the commercial type of products like uh, Microsoft stuff as well as MATLAB. Now, the last part is is using Windows Server 2012 for deployment. I played with it. I really, really like it. I even had Microsoft uh, last winter uh, demo a lot of the capabilities of Windows Server 2012 for various things with my uh, with SQL Server as well as any .NET uh, applications that I made deploy, um, and it's really good. Um, I'm just finding with Linux. Uh, if you want to do something in Linux, you have all these dependencies that you have to build and then they may be out of whack and you have to upgrade this version and that version unless you'd like to spend a lot of time coding it's not really a smart option at least from my perspective because it just takes a lot a lot of time to get to that point um, so that's to me the biggest drawback of it and that's why I choose to use these uh, technologies okay so now let's talk about our data provider at the beginning I, I've always used data uh, IQ feed I've been using them now for about two years and they're really really good uh, you get uh, real-time data, uh, historical data, and pretty well for all the major asset classes. Now, as I said, for a little guy or a gal <laughs> starting out, it's, it's very affordable. Uh, I just released a new version that has very high precision, which is good. Now, for my members, I've also identified some very powerful third-party tools uh, that exist for rapid downloading of any data for backtesting purposes. You're going to save yourself a ton of, ton of thousands of dollars by using this technique. Um, and uh, it, it, it just, you don't have to go online to download these uh, uh, historical databases that cost probably hundreds of dollars. Um, well, at least when you're starting out, I should talk about that. Now, last thing is for my platform, I do use the API uh, from IQ Feed, uh, and that's an essential requirement for uh, this, this, this so called. Uh, platform that, I'm, that I've developed or in the process of writing. Now the last piece is the broker for execution. Now I'm from Canada and pretty well interactive brokers is my only option, so IB uh, is the only uh, affordable broker uh, and that supports automation through uh, an API. So this platform that I'm talking about, I've, I've demoed this through, through for my, uh, my uh, premium members. Uh, that we have the capabilities of co-generating a, a, a model from MATLAB, uh, put it in and deploy it into this so-called model in C-sharp, and have it collect the data in real time from IQ feed and run it against whatever algorithm I want or series of algorithms, and then be able to execute trades with this uh, IB, Interactive Brokers. Now, I do it through the TWS uh, desktop client, Right now, it's the easiest to work with. Uh, there's a lot of disadvantages with it, but when you're starting out, uh, especially for um, low volume, 
it's really good to work with, um, and especially for um, you know submitting orders and your transactions. So that's how I'm doing it right now. Now, if I decide to scale up, I can also use IB, uh, the IB gateway, or uh, even eventually the fixed support. Um, so there's lots of options there, as, as possibly as I grow and scale up, I could always do that. Um, and there's fix a library, which is now available for Windows, which is a big deal, um, which is kind of like uh, Quick Fix. Uh, but for Windows and just supposedly easier to work with. Um, and that's pretty well it. That's the entire infrastructure of the system environment that I'm going with. Now from here on out, uh, I encourage you to uh, learn from quantlabs.net. Uh, I just set up uh, a few months ago an, uh, an academy where I put up a variety of um, resources for different types of strategies, both in our MATLAB as well as um, uh, a complete uh, algorithm course for a quant as well as um, uh, another introduction to things like Quantlib uh, for uh, options uh, open source library as well as uh, another course on how to build and compile uh, TradeLink which can supposedly is H high frequency trading cap capable or has potential for it um, and that's an open source trading platform so you can get all that info and all those courses at the uh, Academy now, also, I've got um, my membership. Uh, you can join that or order for and, and join it on a monthly basis. I also have a free newsletter. Uh, you can get it through here. And lastly, uh, I have a blog which I put up every submit as daily content going up. And that's available here. Hopefully, that'll help you out. Um, and uh, if you got any questions, just let me know, and uh, I'll get uh, back to you. Talk to you later.